the best worst podcast you've ever heard. And now, the Ronnie and Bo Show, brought to you by Prescott Realty. It's the Ronnie and Bo Show, another exciting edition. And Ronnie, uh, I've got a surprise for you. What's the surprise? Well, we're going to do something new on the podcast today, and oh. I'll tell you in just a couple of seconds. But I'm, let's, I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be fun. You're really going to like Bo, this Bo, get your dog off my lap. I told you to not bring your dog to the studio no, anymore. No, no, no. It's bring your dog to work day. I oh, it's know. not a dog. It's just your beard reaching oh, all the way Wait over a here. minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. It's the Ronnie and Bo Show brought to you by Prescott Realty. Yes, you can give them a call today for a no-commitment free consultation. Their phone number is 928-499-8700. They're specialists in what they do, and they have several specialists right. uh, you, in their office. If you're looking for a custom lot in the Williamson Valley area, then Richard Hanna is who you're going to want to call. Or existing homes, Lorinda Johnson, new home builds, you've got John Rocha for you. And then first-time home buyers. Kylie Elliott is the specialist there. So give them a call or email them at info at prescottrealty.com. And their uh, banner, their logo is on our website at ronnieandboshow.com. Uh, so uh, we've got a show coming up in November. I can't believe that we're doing this. Oh, my goodness. Are, are you ready yet? No. You, I'm, yeah. I'm still taking anxiety pills. <laughs> I'm nervous. Well, yeah, on, on, uh, on Thursday, November 1st, uh, it will be an evening of comedy with the Ronnie and Bo Show live at the Prescott Elks Theater in downtown Prescott. Uh, tickets are actually already on sale. And I, from what I hear, we've already halfway filled yes. up the building. Yeah, we're about halfway sold out. So get your tickets to the uh, evening of comedy featuring the Ronnie and Bo Show. It's a fundraiser for 1010 Ministries. That's correct. And uh, it's going to help them out an awful lot. You can get your tickets by going to the box office in person or going to prescottelkstheater.com or call the box office 928-777-1370. Okay, before we get into our... Our, uh, Canadian or dead episode oh, or segment. We've got another good segment. Uh, yep. I'm, I'm going to tell you what we're doing. Yeah, we're, we're doing our first phone interview. No way on the podcast. You're kidding. No, we, we, we have we have our now? first interview on the Via podcast. Telephone. Yeah, we're going to do that. That is fantastic. So now we can reach the, the world. Entire, they don't have to come to the studio and have your. Beard draped over them. There you go. You can, there you go. You can, All awesome. right. So we're going to do that in just a couple of seconds. But right now it's an episode called Canadian or Dead, brought to you by PrescottClothing.com. And uh, if you don't know how this is, I'm going to give Ronnie a name. Okay. And he has to tell me whether that person is Canadian or dead. Awesome. All right. Are awesome. you ready? Awesome. I am ready. I think I'm going to stump you on this one. Okay. It's Randall Dark. Oh my goodness! Canadian Randall or dead? Dark Randall Dark. That name rings Easy. a bell. Easy. And don't insult him. Is he? And I don't know wait, which why? which way you could insult him. Why? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> if you say he's dead and he's alive, that would be insulting. That would. If you say he's Canadian and, and he's, he's not, and is he's, that insulting? <laughs> yes, he's Bavarian. That could be a problem. <laughs> That's so true. Go ahead. I don't even know. If I have a guess about Randall Dark on being Canadian or dead, I'm pretty sure he's not dead. <laughs> so but I don't know <laughs> if, if he's Canadian, so maybe we could just ask him. Randall, are you there? Matter of fact, I am here. How are you? <laughs> so you're not dead, Randall. And I'm alive. Well, let me look. I, I'm, I'm looking into a mirror right now, and I'm moving, so I'm alive. <laughs> so the answer to uh, Canadian or dead, Randall Dark is Canadian. Canadian, yay. And, and that's very important, but even more important is he was a pioneer, is a pioneer in HDTV, right, Randall? Yeah, I was lucky enough to uh, hear about high-definition television many, many years ago, and uh, there's only a few people dumb enough to invest in it in the early years, and hey, I was one of them. <laughs> oh, that's well, great. But you'll have your plaque on a museum somewhere for that, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sadly, yes. I mean, I got a I got a 60 inch Samsung uh, uh, high def TV because of Randall, <laughs> and, and because of his work, and because of his uh, pioneering efforts into into the HD stuff. And Randall, uh, we've been friends for at least 10 years. Um, yeah. uh, because my wife likes your wife. No, I don't know. No. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, 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 yeah. Thank, thank goodness we have really smart and talented wives. Otherwise, <laughs> you and I would be in big trouble, my friend. <laughs> That's true. So, uh, Randall, I apologize. Uh, even though we're good friends, I don't really know your title, but I know you uh, make movies. You write books. Uh, how would you categorize yourself? 
When people ask me that question, I just kind of throw the big blanket by saying I'm a writer, director, producer, cinematographer. Uh, I've done everything from uh, children's plays all the way to feature films. Yeah, and and that's absolutely true, and that's a great description. So uh, you told me uh, real briefly, um, you started young in your hometown in Canada uh, making plays, doing doing plays. So tell me a little bit about that with the children and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I um, I needed a job as a teenager, and uh, being lazy, I figured the best thing to do is just to write, write, direct, and produce children's plays because very few people were doing it. And uh, I I lucked out. I got to be honest. The first thing I wrote uh, was successful, and people liked it, and it became um, a play that a lot of different groups did, and it toured parts of Canada, and and. The, the, one of the first things I ever wrote actually got made into an app, and it's called Tell a Sasquatch, and I tried to tell the, the cute little story of how the Sasquatch came about. Oh, that's fantastic. So we'll have to get that app. And yeah. I, I bet you our kids would like that app. Well, it's not just an app. I think it's important. You know, I, 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 kids, you go to any any place and you see children on, on their phones, and a lot of the times it's mindless stuff. And trust me, tell us Sasquatch is pretty mindless. <laughs> However, the, the 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 one thing I did do, um, I, I'm sorry, I think they're coming to get me. Hang okay, on. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. He's <laughs> doing stuff. He's yeah, working. You're actually driving yeah. in the car. Is that correct? Yeah, he's driving yeah. in the car, and he's got appointments to do. And he was nice enough to take this call. That's yeah. okay, Randall. So we're yeah. gonna. We're, okay, uh, you ready? Yeah, so so basically, besides being a, an app that tells the story of Sasquatch, I thought it was really important to have an educational element in it. And so besides just being an app, um, it's the children can go inside it, and I have a dictionary. Now, all dictionaries are unbelievably boring for the most part. So what I try to do is make a dictionary that was fun and funny, and it still explains all the things that are that you want to explain in a dictionary, but in a fun and creative way. That's really cool. Okay, I have a question, yeah. Randall. Then, do you believe in Sasquatch? <laughs> do I believe in Sasquatch? Hey, yes. I believe in the Easter Bunny. I believe in Santa Claus. Of course, I do. That's See? fantastic. Okay, we, uh, so, we can be friends. So, Randall, I know that you've done things, uh, movies with um, uh, Willie Nelson and Harry Connick Jr. Uh, Angels Sing. I know that you have a book uh, uh, called The Easter Frog. I know that you've done documentaries. What do you want to talk about, man? Um, you, well, let, let's let's. Let's, you know, we'll go through the, the sequence. Um, you know, I was sure. I was lucky enough to work with, with Harry Connick Jr. and Lyle Lovett and Willie Nelson, all really very, very nice and talented. That is quite and, the uh, trio right uh, there. I mean... Yeah, I, you know, you know, I'm, um, I've just, you know, been, been really, really lucky to, to be able to do this. I think you're a hard worker. And, well, you know, I, it's it's interesting you say that because I tell people I've never worked a day in my life because <laughs> I've been blessed to work with incredible people like Kristen Cox, who happens to be my wife. Uh, unfortunately, I've worked with people like Bo Woods. What? And, uh, you know, and, and everyone in between. Uh, so, you so know, the, 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 the thing that I love about my life is that you get to experience one-on-one relationships with people and their creative element, and I learned so much. So, you know, the the movie um, that we just finished, I got to spend hours and hours alone talking with Horace Leachman, for yeah, goodness oh, sake. Man. She I mean, is an icon. I mean, just Mary Tyler Moore yeah. show on. I mean, just amazing. So what was yeah, that like? So it, Oh, it was a dream. And then, first of all, uh, Marcy Hanna wrote the book when we last spoke, which uh, you know I highly recommend it. It's been made into this this feature film. Uh, Melissa Gilbert's in it, and you know there's a, you, you can look it up. There's a lot of very talented people. And and but what I loved about working on this project is from the from Chorus Leachman to the director to the the cinematographer to the production assistant, they were all really really nice sweet, straightforward people. And, you know, people, you know, we've lived in LA, we've lived in New York City, right, and, right. and, 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 you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad. I love New York City, don't get me wrong, I loved LA, but working with this group of people in this small town in Georgia was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. That is so cool. How long? So, go ahead. Yeah. No, when I was uh, 17 years old, my grandparents took me to see 
uh, Harry Connick Jr. perform. And, uh, I mean, he was, I think the When Harry Met Sally album had just come out. And so, I mean, he was just a young yeah. guy himself. Uh, but you could tell right there, kind of in the old school vein, that he was one of those all around entertainers, not just a singer. Yeah. Uh, or or a band leader, but that he had the acting chops. When you were uh, on Angel Sing with Willie Nelson and Lyle Lovett and Harry Connick Jr., did you uh, get a sense of that? Like just the the full scope entertainers, or w- were some of them uh, that the acting part come a little harder for them? Or what what did you <laughs> observe in that? And, and, you know, that's a, that's a really, really good question. And what I found is these people specifically, but almost in general, talented people are talented. Yeah. Many, many, you know, you know, you know, I, I can't sing or dance, trust me, and I'm semi-talented. <laughs> but the, peop- the, the people that you talk about, they, they, they can what I call cross-platform. They, mm. they can sing. They can act. Yeah. And, and when you sit down with them, they're the real deal. The one-on-ones I've had with, with Lyle Lovett and, and Harry Kern Jr. and, and you know, Gloris Leeson, you know, it's, it, they're very, very, very famous, but they're humble That's so about neat. it. And they're real about it. They're That's got to be refreshing. And, and and I've worked with some actors that I, I'm not going to say their names, but have been unbe- unbelievably arrogant, and you know <laughs> they won't even talk to the production assistant because it's beneath them type of thing. Wow. But the people I've been blessed enough to work with in my career, um, they're the real deal. So, uh, Randall, we're talking to Randall Dark. Um, he's a, a producer, a writer, a movie maker, an HD pioneer, uh, and there's other things that I've left off of his title. Uh, he was involved in Angel Sing, a Christmas movie uh, that we're talking about. He just wrapped up uh, When We Last Spoke, a book that was adapted into a movie uh, starring uh, Melissa Gilbert and Cloris Leachman and others. Uh, he actually, uh, Randall's uh, video, or his film, the behind-the-scenes uh, portion of that film is circulating on social media and stuff. That was pretty fun to make, wasn't it? Oh, you know, I loved it. It's, if you go to When We Last Spoke Facebook, everybody, um, and you click on the, uh, the, the behind the scenes thing that I shot, it, it was so much fun. And, and, uh, you know, behind the scenes, it's special because, you know, you, I want the, the, the film goer and the person that sees it to get a sense of not just what's in front of the camera, but the type of people and the fun we have, how, 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 how great it is behind the, behind the camera. Mm-hmm. And, and not only that, I also got to do the interviews with the actors and the director, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, it's just a fun experience. So what's, what's nice, it's like a teaser. It's, if you go to, you know, the Facebook woman I spoke, it, you know, click on it, you get just a sense of just how cool this project was. You know, Randall, Ronnie, uh, you know me, uh, you and I go way back, you know me, I'm a big music buff. Ronnie is a big movie buff. I mean, he loves that industry, buys yeah. into <laughs> it, eats it all up, drinks the Kool-Aid, and, and he, sure. uh, R- Ronnie hasn't seen that yet, but I was looking at that <laughs> behind the, uh, the, the scenes film that you made, well, and, and they, yeah. they, show you, they show you a guy is sitting there with a, with a, a, a garden hose spraying a, a car window to make it look like it's raining oh, behind wow. the camera. So oh, you really get to cool. see that Stuff, yeah. And you get to see the actors cutting up in between takes and that kind of stuff. Uh, that's fun. Well, well, then, number one, I like Ronnie way more than you, by the way, what? already. <laughs> and, 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 and two, um, you're right. What we, we, you know, so many times movie people go, oh, we're t- it's magic and we're not going to show you or tell you. <laughs> I am, Good the point. one thing I am not, I am not a protectionist. And I don't have a lot of ideas. Um, but any idea I have, I will share my knowledge with anyone, anytime. And, and I said this in the year, early years of high definition. You know, I was one of the first to open an HDTV production facility. And, you know, you can read about it in, in articles about me. And I constantly would say, if you want to open a high definition company across the street from me and be my competition, please come in my door. I will tell you, I yeah. will show you Very everything generous. I know. Well, no, I just think, we, you know, this planet is a hard planet to, to make yep, a living yep, on. Yep. Sh- shame on us. Shame on us if we don't help each other in our careers. So I, I've, I've done that my entire life. I think more people should do it. And, and you know, it's, it's like what you guys are doing. You guys are bringing information, important information. I'm sure you work with charities, or you should. I'm, I, you know, and doing things where you just share your knowledge and help people. That, that's why we're on the planet. Yeah, thanks, Randy. 
handle. I, I, we totally share the same heart that direction. I mean, talk about collaboration. Um, I, I see that you were involved with the United Nations 50th anniversary. Uh, yeah. What was that like? You know, it, it was fun. Because I look at everyone as equals, I don't get intimidated. Yeah. But, but, but being in, in, that, in that environment um, and with all those people that are trying to make the planet a safer and better place, was, I, I'll just say it was a humbling experience for me. I, 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 wanted, I wanted to run up and hug everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, because you know, it, we need to stop fighting, you know, everyone yeah. deserves a fair share and, and being in an environment where their their purpose is let, let's work this out was really cool. So, uh, Randall, I want to switch topics just a little bit. Randall has a brother, he has several brothers, and one of his brothers is a, is a, is a world famous I would say um, um, artist. Uh, what type of art does he do? Is it metal? How would you define that? Yeah, Shane is. I'm. I, I'm semi talented. Shane is unbelievably talented. And, and if, if you want to Google him, world, it's S H A Y N E Shane Dark sculpture artist. And you know he's uh, he's world class. He's got. Uh, he makes mammoth mammoth steel sculptures. I think one he just finishes like six. Stories tall that punches into a building, and uh, it, there's there you know it, it, he just has very very original creative steel sculptures, so, so it, it's pretty cool. So Randall Dark, uh, you know, it, Randall Dark, and his brothers and his family, obviously very talented in in many different fields. So you you did a documentary on your brother Shane, right, and his work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many years ago, um, you know, to, he was doing some I thought brilliant work, and and so I went, you know what? It's all about friends and family, you know. Yep, yep. So, so I went, you know, I'm going to do a documentary about about my brother Shane, and what's that? It actually, it aired on Discovery. But what's cool about this documentary? You meet Shane. He's smart. He's articulate. Um, he's this brilliant artist. And at the end of the documentary, he goes, "Oh, by the way, I can't read or write. I'm dyslexic." Oh, and wow. and what and and why I love that part of it because he's so humble, he's sincere, and so and and what we've tried to do and what I've personally tried to do is send this out worldwide because there's a lot of people that have issues in their lives, whether it's dyslexia or or whatever or just hard times. One thing I loved about this documentary, and Shane was so kind enough to let me uh, let the world know, is that even though you have something where you, that is as debilitating as dyslexia, he's been able to have an incredible life, an amazing career. So I wanted to use this to help inspire young, old, and and people in the middle that if you work hard, if you're honest and truthful and you, you work hard and you're focused, there's a chance you could be successful. So, Bo, there's still hope for you. you. I believe there's still <laughs> hope for you. Thank you. So that was very courageous of your brother to, uh, to, to share that in the documentary, of course. And yeah, and I, I just think that, uh, more people should do stuff like that. It will make the planet a better place. So, Randall, before we wrap things up, I want to ask you about your project Easter Frog. Can you explain that to me? <laughs> and am I saying that right? Oh, yeah. It's, you know what? I am so excited about this. And, you know, this I tell so cool. people I've done, some, I've done some interesting things in my life, but I've come up with some fun things I've written and directed. But this thing that I just finished writing is a best idea I've ever had. It's a feature film, slash it can be an app, it can be a play, blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's basically it's called Easter Frog, the brains behind the bunny. And when I, I've asked like 500 people, how did the Easter bunny came up, come around? And nobody knows. So basically, I'm telling the original fairy tale of how the Easter bunny came about. And because you're a friend and, and I know you have no listeners, I'm going to tell you guys because no one's going to hear this. So, so, so basically what happened was many years ago, these two children who had no mommy and daddy, lived in a foster home, went outside to play, and they were crying. And these two frogs saw them crying. So they went to the chicken and said, paint some funny stories on this egg, on these eggs, so colorful, funny stories, and we'll give them as gifts. So the, the chicken 
uh, gave them the eggs, the, the frogs painted the stories, and they, they saw the kids playing, and they hopped towards them, and the kids saw these green, warty, slimy things coming and ran away crying, and it broke the hearts of the frogs. So every year, frogs make bunny outfits, crawl into them, and deliver See? Easter oh, eggs as bunny fantastic. rabbits. That's fantastic. That is <laughs> Well, thank amazing. you, but, but here's, the, here's, the, here's the gig. This story is really about children of all ages that look in the mirror, and, and, and I think we all go through that. Bo still goes through that. What? You look in the mirror and, and, and you don't like what you see. And what I'm trying to tell children is, who cares what the outside is? Look, my friends, what's inside of you is what's really, really important. And Beautiful that's the story. essence of the story. He's a pretty Thank smart you. guy, isn't he? Randall yeah, Darts for Randall sure. Dark. Randall, like, I, I can really tell. You, you're, you're even doing it with us. Just your generosity and your heart. Uh, even that you'd come Aww. on a show like ours. Uh, we are spoiled rotten to that's have right. you with us here today. So, Randall, thank you very much for being our first uh, phone interview on the Ronnie and Bo podcast. Yeah, and I can tell this it's is going to be the honor, best. One. It's an honor. It's an honor to be part of uh, what you guys are doing. I think what you do, you guys are doing, is really, really, really cool. If there's anything else I can do to help you, please call my wife. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's Randall Dark. Thank you very much, buddy. All right, take care. Take thank care. You. Have a great day. Oh boy, wasn't that a fun interview? Oh man, that he's he's fantastic. Yeah, yeah I got to dive in and check out all the stuff that he's. Uh, yeah, he's a good that guy. He's, that he's done. Well, so. thanks for listening to another episode of the Ronnie and Bo Show, brought to you by Prescott Realty. You can get in touch with them or uh, get more information by going to their website, prescottrealty.com, or calling them at nine two eight. Four nine nine eighty seven hundred. Yep, and they work as specialists, and so, like we've been saying, you don't go to a roofer or a baker if you've got a heart issue. That's right. You don't even go to a foot doctor if you've got a heart issue. You want a specialist working on you in that case, and it's the same in Realty. So give them a call, and they'll help you out with finding the right specialist for your buying or selling needs. 928-499-8700. Thanks for listening to The Ronnie and Bo Show, available on your favorite podcast provider. Please connect with The Ronnie and Bo Show on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and RonnieandBoShow.com. Send comments to RonnieandBoShow at gmail.com. This is your announcer speaking. I'm Shotgun Tom Kelly.